ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತಿ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಸೊ ಟುಡೇ ವಿ ಆರ್ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತಂ ಟೆಂತ್ ಕ್ಯಾಂಟು ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಫೋರ್ತ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ವರ್ಸ್ ನಂಬರ್ ತ್ರೀ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಎನ್ ಟೈಟಲ್ ವರ್ಷಿಪಿಂಗ್ ಗೋವರ್ಧನ್ ಹಿಲ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಗಿರಿರಾಜ್ ಗೋವರ್ಧನ್ ಕೀ ಕಥತ್ತಾಂ ಮೇ ಪಿತ ಕೋಯಂ ಸಂಭ್ರಮೋ ವ ಉಪಾಗತ ಕಂ ಫಲಂ ಕಸ್ಯ ವ ಉದ್ದೇಶ ಕೇನ ವಾ ಸಾಧ್ಯತೆ ಮಕ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ರಿಪೀಟ್ ಕಥತಾಂ ಮೇ ಪಿತ ಕೋಯಂ ಸಂಭ್ರಮೋ ವ ಉಪಾಗತ ಕಂ ಫಲಂ ಕಸ್ಯ ಉದ್ದೇಶ ಕೇನ ವಾ ಸಾಧ್ಯತೆ ಮಕ ಕಥತಾಂ ಮೇ ಪಿತ ಕೋಯಂ ಸಂಭ್ರಮೋ ವ ಉಪಗ ಉಪಾಗತ ಕಂ ಫಲಂ ಕಸ್ಯ ಉದ್ದೇಶ ಕೇನ ವಾ ಸಾಧ್ಯತೆ ಮಕ ಕಥ್ಯತಾಂ ಲೆಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಬಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೈನ್ಡ್ me to me pitaha my dear father kaha what ayam this sambramaha flurry of activity vaha upon you upagataha kam kim what phalam the consequence kasya for those for whose va and uddeshaha sek kena by what means va and Sadhyate is to be accomplished. Makaha, the sacrifice. Verse number, sorry, the translation as follows. Lord Krishna said, My dear father, kindly explain to me what this great endeavor of yours is all about. What is it meant to accomplish? If this is a ritual sacrifice, then for whose satisfaction is it? is it intended and by what means is it going to be executed <clears throat> there is no purport so we'll go to next verse etad bruhi mahan kamo mayam shushrushave pitah nahi gopyam hi sadhu nam krityam sarvatmanam iha astyasva astya asvapara drishtinam amruto dashta vidvisham translation please krishna is continuing please tell me about it oh father i have great desire to know and i am ready to hear in good faith certainly no secrets are to be kept by saintly personalities who see all others as equal to him equal to themselves who have no conceptions of mine and others others and who do not consider who is a friend who is a enemy and who is neutral purport lord krishna's father might have thought that his son was a mere child and thus could not properly question the validity of a vedic sacrifice but the lord's clever statements here would certainly have convinced nanda maharaj that sri krishna was making a serious not a whimsical inquiry and that a serious answer has to be thus given om agyanate mirandhasya yananjana shalakaya chakshurun militham yena tasmay shri gurave namaha shri chaitanya manobhishtam sthapitam yena bhutale svayam roopa kadamayam ದಾತಿ ಸ್ವಪದಾಂತಿಕಂ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭುನಿತ್ಯನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ್ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸದಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ 
So this is uh, <clears throat> a very beautiful chapter beginning here. Worshipping of Govardhan Hill. We had done drama of worshipping Govardhan Hill many many years back. I think the happiest drama with all all varieties of happiness was there in that drama. So you can imagine the drama was performed and there was so much happiness in the drama itself. What would be what would have been the real experience of the Brajbasis when they held this festival? And Sri Giriraj Govardhan is one of the important uh, personalities in the pastimes of Krishna in Goloka Vrindavan and also in Bhoma Vrindavan. In short, how he appeared was that after Goloka Vrindavan was created by Sri Krishna's uh, very personal body, Srimati Radharani also was created and all the gopis, all the variety of items in Goloka was created including Jamuna Devi. So Radharani said that I want to have a place which is very suitable for experiencing intensely the mellow of Rasalila. And that I want at the bank of Jamuna behind the Nikunja grove. As soon as she said that from the chest of Krishna appeared one dense, unlimitedly dense effulgence as a sprout. A sprout which is unlimitedly dense and effulgent. And that fell down on the ground, the bank of Jamuna. And it started growing immediately in front of the eyes of everybody. And it grew to the size of 100 crores of yojanas. That is 800 crore miles long. And 50 crores yojanas tall in the sky. One yojana is 8 kilometers. And 100,000 yojanas in, a, in spread, that means in width. And even after coming to this size, to the amazement of everybody who was watching, still it kept growing. Now everybody was scared by the time. So Krishna chastised and stopped the growth of Govardhan. So Govardhan stopped. Then he appeared as, as the son of Drona on earth. And the long story, Pulatse Muni brought him to Vrindavan. But still, one of the reasons why Pulatse Muni cursed him to reduce, because there was a danger of growing of Govardhan like he grew in Goloka Vrindavan. To, to stop that with proactive action, he was cursed to reduce by <laughs> mustard seed size every single day so that he would not cover the whole earth as a lid of a pot. He would have covered the earth in such a way that earth would have been totally suffocated. So this is how Govardhan appeared in Sri Golok uh, Vrindavan. And I thought that we should glorify Govardhan today because Govardhan's full chapter is going to be described very in this month. Sri Giriraj, as, as I explained to you, appeared from the very divine chest of Lord Krishna. Krishna made him his crown, his umbrella, and thus honored him. All of us know the story that uh, there were Ram was Lord Ramchandra was building a setu and it had gap, so they were all desperate. There was time limit. Sita Devi had given time limit. And Hanumanji was searching for one wholesome mountain, so it, in one shot only it will be finished, rather than bringing many mountain peaks from many places. So he saw Govardhan, and Govardhan was picked up, the announcement came, Setu was completed, so it had to be kept down, he had to be kept down, and Giriraj was very, very, very sad in the heart, having lost the opportunity after two yugas of waiting, from Satya Yuga, Treta Yuga, at the end of Treta Yuga, so Lord Krishna, Lord Ramchandra heard the news from Hanumanji about the great expressions of divine feelings of separation and desire to serve. So Lord Ramchandra explained that I will come next time as Sri Krishna and fulfill his desire by performing my intimate pastimes in and around him and I will hold him on my head for seven days and seven nights as umbrella and a crown for me. So, Brajbasi punch in this uh, local traditional punch is that there was seven cores of gap in Ram Setu. So, Krishna, it, it could have been filled up by Govardhan itself, but that was filled up by something else. So, Krishna lifted him for seven days and seven nights by keeping him above his head, giving him higher position, and that thus honored him. 
then the glory of govardhan is that indra is very powerful everybody knows how how much strength and power he has but still krishna condemned indra yaga the worship of indra and convince everybody to worship govardhan hill that is the greatness of govardhan it is explained that krishna's past times performed at govardhan with the coward boys with the coward girls with the cows cannot even be described by four mouthed brahma ji chaturmukhi brahma also cannot enough describe the glories of krishna's past times performed in and around govardhan who can describe the glories of govardhan in whose body maha pap nashini manasi ganga shri govind kund radha kund and sham kund lalita kund and kusum sarovar are residing because each and every holy place which is mentioned and many many more are there are individually capable of delivering one from all the bondages of material life and capable of giving krishna prem to each and every living entity who approach them even by darshan there is one shila called mukut shila which krishna's mukut had touched to that shila who can describe the glory of that shila which is bedecked with the imprint of krishna's mukuta shri krishna painted in his childhood pastimes many many shilas with various pictures various paintings those shilas are known as chitra shila now is appropriate to tell you at this time that we are going to go to govardhan and stay for four days there do not forget to go to a place in front of uh, just just little ahead of uh, maheshwari bhavan and there is one great uh, samadhi of one great brajwasi maharaj kaya prasad ji maharaj where the samadhi is there there are stocks of variety of maybe hundreds of shilas which have paintings of uh, various past times of krishna painted by krishna himself please go and witness yourself you will see radha krishna performing past time playing you will see mahabharat also painted on many many shilas you will see peacocks you will see krishna radha rani facing one another beautiful shilas those are called as chitra shilas <clears throat> there is one shila there uh, near chandra sarovar it's called as vadini shila in sanskrit terms local terms called bajini shila it is explained that krishna used to play on that shila while having fun with coward boys and later on indra played on that shila when krishna was performing spring time ras lila pasanti ras lila so it is there today also in the goshala of the chandra sarovar area it is explained one who rolls this is krishna himself has given benediction one who rolls in the dust of govardhan he will enter vaikuntha one time krishna broke all the pots of uh, coward girls of all the wonderful milk and yogurt and butter milk and everything and he jumped up on the trees and picked up trees of kadamba and palasha trees and made cups of them and in that cup they had all this wonderful uh materials which were broken down on the pots krishna served everybody looking at krishna making the leaves into cups there onwards the leaves the trees of kadamban palash started making cups on the tree itself and that place where krishna actually first time fed all the coward boys the milk and butter and uh, yogurt in the leaf cups that place is called drona tirtha and this drona tirtha gave rise to many trees which started actually making tree making leaf cups on the tree itself even we have seen at dohani kunda at govardhan and many places in uh, ter kadamba kadamba is giving like to leaf cups in the form of tree and the, on the tree itself there is one beautiful shila in govardhan uh, in jatipura where radharani had one time had done her shringar before entering in raslila so that place then became famous as shringara mandala and from this very shringara mandala which is now in the cave was in the cave in the middle of the cave shrina ji appeared after 400 4800 years so where now we hear the story of uh, madhavendra puri he got a dream so that is the place where krishna uh, radharani had done her shringar so it's called shringara mandala tirtha and <clears throat> Shinaji appeared from uh, that shila in the same form in which he lifted Govardhan mountain. 
So then the same tad rupam, the same form, he appeared from the middle of the shila, and he had. It is explained in the scriptures that his desire to perform pastimes around Govardhan was not fully satisfied. So he came again in Kali Yuga after 4,800 years of Kali Yuga as Srinaji. And in the Srinaji pastimes, he half time remained as a deity and performed pastimes. Half time he came out of deity and became a coward boy and performed pastimes. It is explained that we have four Nathas, Jagannath, Ranganath, Dwarkanath and Badrinath. And these are four dhams and we are supposed to perform four dham yatra. But it is explained that Govardhan Nath, Sri Krishna, is in between the four, four Nathas. And if you do four Nath darshans, there is Chardham Yatra and Chard darshans, and you don't take Govardhan Nath darshan, it is said all your four Dham Yatra is futile. And if you go to Govardhan and take Govardhan Nath darshan, Srinaji darshan, then you don't have to go to Chardham. <laughs> that is the glory of Sri Govardhan Nath. Is all the darshans of the four Nathas are accomplished by taking darshan of Srinaji. And today Srinaji is in Udaipur, of course. He appeared in Govardhan. Viraj Govardhan is filled with many, many places where there are footprints and handprints of Krishna. Sri Krishna himself describes in the Garga Sanita that whoever witnesses my handprints and footprints, Narad Muni is explaining to Bahul Ashwa, whoever is uh, taking darshan of Krishna's handprints and footprints in Govardhan and in Braj, will straight enter in Golok Vrindavan at the end of this life. So whenever we take Yatra, we should make sure that devotees take darshan of footprints and handprints of Krishna. There are many in Kamyavan, many in Nandagaon, many in Govardhan. And these footprints are Krishna's unlimited mercy upon us that he has left behind so that conditioned souls can get delivered straight from their miserable condition into blissful condition in Golok Vrindavan. Then Sri Krishna himself gave benediction while convincing his father. That is our today's discussion. That whoever eat, will eat prasadam of I mean food offered to Govardhan, that is Govardhan Prasad, will take birth in Braja. He will have no old age, he will have very peaceful mind and he will have very beautiful body. All those who do that. So performing Govardhan Puja in Govardhan itself, offering cooking in Govardhan itself, offering to Govardhan on Govardhan itself and having the Mahaprasadam in Govardhan itself is a great activity which unbelievable benedictions are there in that. It's not just, not just a mechanical activity. It's done with heart and devotion and love. It can straight give you entrance in Braj. Not necessarily earthly Braj. In Golok Vrindavan. And Krishna also given benediction. Those who worship Govardhan and perform this Govardhan Leela festival, Govardhan Puja festival, will yield great wealth. Of course that is spiritual. But also physical. Will yield great beauty. And will develop affection from all people around him. Whoever is around him in connection with him, they will feel great affection for the person who participates in Govardhan Puja festival. So today's uh, scenario is like this, that Krishna is about seven years old. He has lived in Braj Bhumi for those many years. And every year this Puja was being performed. It's not that it's the first time only it was performed and first time only he stopped it. All these years, every year Nanda Maharaj is performing this festival of Indra Yaga. Considering Indra to be a great benefactor, bestowing his reins and sustaining Sri Vrindavan and cows. So why this time only Krishna is questioning? Because Krishna is a very multifarious personality. He has all the memory of all his past incarnations and all the past promises that he has given to so many people in the past incarnations, including Matsyavatar. In Matsyavatar, when he appeared in the ocean as a huge, huge fish, so many Samudra Kanyas, beautiful ladies in the ocean, they got attracted to him. And they wanted to perform, I mean, enter into Ras Lila, enter into conjugal relationship with him. And he had promised them, don't worry, when I come as Krishna, I will make you gopis and give you entrance in Ras Lila. So there are many promises he had made. And this time, he is also remembering that his devotee Indra, who is bedecked with lots of power, is now thinking that he is supreme personality of Godhead. Jeeva Goswami explains that Indra was thinking that I am supreme personality of Godhead and everybody on earth should worship me 
so that they can get purified and so that they can develop affection for me and come back to me. <laughs> so you know, so many acharyas have explained that when anybody, especially a devotee, develops a, develops pride in the heart. Krishna just very gets very upset actually because this is one thing Krishna doesn't like that is pride and he doesn't uh, of course pride takes us so much away from Krishna but Krishna doesn't say ki, okay he is proud now let him go away from my association that is one thing a physical situation but Krishna doesn't leave them as, leave them as they are or wherever they are he does some solution some action so that they can be freed from their pride. That is Krishna. So Krishna is a true well-wisher and thinking of true welfare of his devotees. So this time when Krishna is inquiring about from his father, what is going on father? Why is everybody so busy? So many is well-dressed, so many people are bringing ingredients and arranging everything and there's so much commotion here. Can you tell me what is happening here? Is it a sacrifice? Who is performing the sacrifice? For whom it is being performed? What is the conclusion? What is the yield? What is we? What are we expecting from this sacrifice? All these questions are being asked in by Krishna, because Krishna's mind is full of mercy, thinking of saving his devotee Indra. And when he performs some activity to save some devotee, it's not just mere uh, activity; it is a pastime. And in one pastime, he accomplishes so many goals, and becomes so beautiful that even one who is corrected becomes blissful in the end. It's very painful because when pride is corrected by Krishna. It becomes very painful affair for the person who has to undergo that correction. But even then, Krishna, the way he does it, the way he accomplishes so many targets along with that, the person also is getting corrected. It becomes very blissful, blissful. So in the end, Indra became a little blissful. He was crying and crying, but in the end, he became blissful. Now this pastime of Krishna, for whom the mercy is intended, first is. Mercy on Indra, as I explained, a used Leela was performed. Second mercy was on Brijavasis, because in Vrindavan, if you study Krishna Leela, you will find most of the times Krishna is performing pastimes of one Leela, I mean one Rasa. Either he will be with mother, father and enjoying Vatsalya Ras from them, or he is in the night with gopis and experiencing conjugal Ras from him, from them. Or in the daytime he is herding cows and he is experiencing Sakyaras from them. Sometimes Sakyaras and Santaras together because even the trees and the land of Brajbhumi, even the peacocks and the monkeys and the birds are reacting with him simultaneously. He is exchanging glances with the coward boys and exchanging sounds with the birds. But never there was a time where all the five rasas were experienced by Krishna with all the devotees of five rasas together in one pastime under one roof. So Krishna was meditating on, planning on a beautiful pastime where all kinds of devotees will come together. In fact, all Braj Bhumi will come together and he will have a wonderful mixture of all kinds of rasa exchanges in one pastime, which will last for seven days and seven nights. Actually, it could have lasted for 700 nights and 700 days (laughs) or unlimited days and unlimited nights. But somehow Krishna made it seven days and seven nights. So that is one another mercy that Krishna was meditating on. Third was mercy on Govardhan himself because Govardhan, you know how many years, two full yugas he was waiting. And one yuga he lost his opportunity. And now the third yuga, at the end of the third yuga, Krishna is coming and performing pastimes. So he wanted to reciprocate with Govardhan in a very, very, very special way. What Krishna did with Govardhan was Govardhan was tormented with such kind of rains which are meant for devastation. It is not like heavy rains. You can't say it's heavy rains. <laughs> it is some rains, some kind of rains which are only sent for destruction of the creation. And the ultimate pain, sometimes it is said, 100 kilometers on earth, water is filled up. Water under uh, earth is submerged with a radius of 100 kilometers of water all around. Thus the uh, mini mini prelate takes place, and then all living entities get destroyed, and again Srishti starts when one day of Brahma ends, uh, one night Brahma ends, and he begins in the beginning of his day new creation. When that is not uh, Mahapralaya, 
You can imagine such kind of pain. And such rains were thrown on Govardhan. And Govardhan definitely must have been suffering so much. But it explained that, there is so much description is there that Govardhan, all the tigers and elephants in the caves of Govardhan ran away. But they had no place to run away because everywhere there was rains. So there were so much of noise of crying out of these wild animals in fear. And Govardhan was himself experiencing so much of pain because of Musal Dhar Varsha. But Krishna, in the middle of unlimited misery, so called misery, made Govardhan ultimately blissful by giving him touch of the tip of his left hand's small finger. He was drawing all his bliss from that touch. At one point, in unlimited body, he had touched his finger, small finger of a seven-year-old boy, at one point, and from that all the transcendental energy was flowing to Govardhan, and Govardhan in the middle of misery was experiencing transcendental bliss. So that mercy on Govardhan. And lastly, mercy on all of us. For all time to come, that we will keep on discussing this wonderful pastime, so we can eternally keep getting purified by hearing and keep hearing, keep learning beautiful lessons from this. So, you can see that <coughs> Sigiriraj Govardhan is now in front of Krishna and uh, the sacrifice is being performed. And the discussion starts and then when as we read in second sloka, is the fourth sloka of this first chapter, that now Nanda Maharaj is understanding that Krishna is very serious. It is not that he is mere, mere a child. You know, sometimes uh, in Garga Sanita and other scriptures we explain that Nanda Maharaj goes into the loss of memory of Krishna being Supreme Lord, suddenly remembers what Garga Muni had said, suddenly comes to know that he, yes, Garga Muni had said, he will lift Govardhan and he will do this and he will be, he is Supreme Personality of Godhead. In previous lifetime he was Ram and Vamana and Narsinga. All this was told to him in the cow shed, in, in confidence, in secret place. But by the power of Yogmaya in Sri Vindavan Dham, the, all the devotees of Krishna, including Nanda Maharaj Yashoda, keep forgetting and keep remembering that is Supreme Lord. At Krishna's desire, when he wants to enjoy rasa, they forget. At some times they remember. So in between, suddenly when he asks these beautiful questions of befitting a Pandita, immediately he understood that now I have to answer very seriously. So it is explained that he kept silent for some time. And then Krishna kept on asking questions to him. Why this and why that? So he said, when Nanda Maharaj immediately said that, actually speaking, Indra is our benefactor. He gives rains to us. By his rains, grass grows. By his grass, um, all the cow, cows eat. And then we get milk. And then we make products of milk. And then we sell the milk products. And so that's how we sustain. So this is our God who is actually the root of our success, of sustenance. But Krishna is answering that. First he said, one should not consider this sacrifice or is the path of dharma without full consideration. And then he began his full consideration, what he thought full consideration was. He said, first you tell me, is dharma Vedic tradition or is dharma local tradition? Which one are you following? <laughs> so Nanda Maharaj is also very diplomatic. He says that it is a Local custom, no doubt. But since it has been passed down by tradition for many, many generations, it has to be considered as Vedic. <laughs> so Krishna says, uh, this appears like karma yoga and looks like you already explained to me that Indra is giving rains and rains are uh, giving crow, crops and all these things. So looks like this Indra is a demigod of karma. He is bound by his karma. And nonetheless, Krishna says to his father that, Everybody is bound by his actions and reactions. Nobody can change the destiny of suffering and enjoyment of each personality. So what Indra can do? Indra has to give his reins as his duty. He is one of the, one of the demigods. And he is bound by karma to give. In, even if you don't perform this Indra Yaga or perform the Indra Yaga, he is bound to give reins. It is not depending upon you doing sacrifice that he will give it. He has to give it anyways. Then he said, uh, dharma gives result to karmas to those who follow the laws of karma. So Indra is simply performing his karma. It is his duty to give reins irrespective of the worship that you are doing. Offering to a person who is karma dependent, that means Indra, right? Offering something to a person who is himself karma dependent, Krishna is saying that it is offering a yagya to ashes. 
Thus like offering yagya to ashes. So we are cowards. That is Abhira. He says in uh, Sanskrit. We are Abhira community. And our duty is to worship that person who is taking care of our cows. And he twisted his argument in such a beautiful way that he told that actually Govardhan, it is not Indra who is protecting our cows. Actually, it is Govardhan who is protecting our cows. Because Govardhan is producing every single situation that is suitable for all the cows to sustain. All of us to sustain. It has given waterfalls, sitting places, caves, uh, uh, jadi booties, j- you know, uh, diamonds and all the jewels, all beautiful trees, fruits, flowers, crops, everything what you need in a beautiful atmosphere, Govardhan is producing. So actually Govardhan is our sustenance. It is not Indra. Cows, so finally, he came back to the discussion into three points. He said, I conclude that cows are our life. Is there any doubt? No doubt. Cows are our life and soul. This mountain maintains our cows, so this is worshipable for us. And third is Brahmanas are our benefactors, so we should take shelter of these three items, cows, Govardhan and the Brahmanas. And take shelter of them and worship them. Then he continued speaking, that why I am saying all these things? Because inference, that is conclusion. Inference means we discuss something and we conclude. And Shabda, that is knowledge. These two things, he says, it's very mysterious how he said this. Then the Acharyas explained that he actually made lots of contradictory statements in the discussion with Indra, with uh, his father. In this statement he says that inference and Shabda are known only through perception. Therefore, perception is chief proof. Then what is he saying ultimately? Whatever you feel is ultimate reality. And that's why I feel that cows are most important and Govardhan is most important, Brahmana is most important. So that becomes the praman for me, the full proof knowledge. That is why one should go what one heart tells. This is how he told his father. And what do we perceive? We perceive that cows are our life, the mountain is maintaining our cows and Brahmana is our benefactors. This is our perception. Therefore, we should follow our perception. (laughs) He told Karma Vimansa philosophy, and he told very twisting way and Nanda Maharaj just kept watching and kept listening what his boy is telling. But finally it is also said that Krishna had Krishna has his Vani is Sammohini. His Vani is Sammohini and whenever he speaks anything it's just mesmerizing. Same power Adharani also has got. When she speaks when she spoke to Durvasa Muni when everybody spoke to her that please eat, please eat that dust made of the mud, kheer made out of dust and pots are made out of dust and everything. So, every, Durvasa got very angry. When Radharani said the same thing and Darvasa many ate that dust as kheer and also experienced divine ecstasies by experiencing that kheer by eating. Similarly, when uh, Krishna spoke, not only Nanda Maharaj, all the elderly Gopas who were also guided to, uh, who were also guided to Nanda Maharaj, they were also bewildered. They were also convincing themselves that what Krishna is telling is true. And what is happening to Indra is, I am Supreme Lord, I am supposed to be worshipped and this naughty, too much talkative boy is convincing so many elderly learned Gopas who have been worshipping me for years together, generations together. How dare, first of all, this boy speak some such arrogant words and how dare these elderly so-called learned men listen to a nonsense person, a small boy who is too much talkative. At that time he sent some murtaka. Because he, they started worshipping. And all that. And plus then Nanda Maharaj was saying, okay, 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 we understand what you are saying. We will arrange a separate worship for Govardhan. As per your desire. Because they just couldn't do anything which was not desiring by Krishna, or not desired by Krishna or not pleasing to him. So they said we will arrange a separate independent worship for Govardhan. But right now we will go on with what we are doing. Krishna is saying, no, whatever is best and whatever is best conclusions as per our perceptions should be immediately performed without delay. So what I suggest you <laughs> that all those preparations that you have done, all these things must be utilized now only in the worship of Govardhan, neglecting the worship of Indra. He was very clear about it. So Nanda Maharaj said, okay, fine, fine. What we can do is we can do half of the things we can use for worshipping Indra and half of the things we can use worshipping Govardhan. He was trying to 
still continue worship of Govard, uh, Indra and Krishna was convinced not to have worship of Indra and negate that. So finally, all the arguments presented by Nanda Maharaj was rejected by Krishna. And all the coward boys, all the elderly gopas, everybody changed their plan and all the ingredients and preparations were now ultimately gathered around Govardhan. And Krishna said that everything now should be made into mountains. And that was made into mountains. All Govardhan area was simply filled with food. And then all of you know, that will be discussed in future also, how Krishna became Govardhan himself. And how the coward boys became so bewildered. Krishna was in front of them. Krishna was appearing there. They were asking Krishna only, who is this person? So Krishna is saying, he is the mountain. And I was talking to you, mountain. he is the mountain. He is mountain personified. And he spoke to them. And he explained that the mountain was extending his hands to fetch water to gargle. Of course, you will hear all the stories. But this is a very beautiful punch. That he was extending his hands and he drew water from many ponds around Govardhan and he gargled and he also spat on all the Brajbasis. <laughs> it's like a beautiful transcendental rain of mercy on all the Brajbasis that Krishna spat. Then he raised, extended his hands to all the, all the uh, ponds made of yogurt and butter and ghee and drank all of that. They said that there were ghees like waterfalls. Ghee were falling like waterfalls in the preparation. The way Krishna directed them to arrange, this made a situation where all the items were into jharnas and ponds and lakes and so many things were created of all the offerings only. So many juices and so many covered products were there. So Krishna is so merciful that he loves his devotees so much. And you know, uh, when he lifted the Govardhan mountain, and everybody came under that. What to speak of? A memory of misery. They were miserable just a couple of minutes ago. So much that they were shouting, Krishna, Krishna, Mahabaho, where are you, Krishna? Of course, they never blamed Krishna. They see, because of you, your father was trying to kill you. We were all telling you. He didn't listen to you. Listen to us. And look what is happening. Because of you, all this is happening. They never... It's a great thing to learn that they never put even one blame or argument to Krishna when they were suffering as a result of Krishna's activities. And on top of that, Krishna tells them that, don't worry, just come behind me. They never question, now where are you taking us? All this is happening because of you. All our cows and cow, I mean, all our cows and our calves are getting flown away by the water. Our houses are being flown away by water. Everything is getting destroyed. We are now going to nothingness. Now you are telling us to go behind you. Where you will take us now? <laughs> they followed him with great faith. Without even asking a second question. This is faith. Faith means unconditional. Irrespective of uh, obvious calamity coming forward by following that person, still you keep faith and following. Of course, not with everybody. Only with Supreme Personality of Godhead. That we should remember. <laughs> and then what he does is, he tells them that, I will lift Govardhan. So all the coward boys feel, what is this? You are a small boy. He is so big. How will you lift? Show us something. So then he takes them to one place called Pravishtavan. Huh? Pravishtavan is where Chandra Sarovar and Petagao. Petagao is actually the place where Pravishtavan is. Where Krishna actually entered the earth in a cave. Pravishta Gufa. And lifted Govardhan. So before that, they were coward boys are questioning how you will lift. How you will keep faith that you will lift. So Krishna, he did what, you know, a huge Kadamba tree. He lifted, no, not lifted, he, wherever the tree was under, stuck to the ground, there only he twisted the whole tree, like we twist the cloth when we wash the tree, wash the cloth. What we do, wash with saris and everything, we twist now to take out the water. So he twisted the whole tree in front of the eyes of all the coward boys. And then they said, yes, yes, now you can lift. Even today, in Pravishta one, the tree is there. That is varnished and kept under glass closet. A beautiful tree where you can go and witness yourself that this is not a man-made creation. You have to go and witness that to believe that it is actually twisted by a person. <laughs> that is Krishna. And then Krishna entered the earth and he lifted. And it is like uh, Acharya explained that like a child lifts a toy, you know, in playful mood, he lifted. Or a child lifts a bhuchatra. That is what is it called? Mushroom. 
or an umbrella a playful umbrella not a big umbrella even a play huh? children have very colorful small small umbrellas how they lift and they dump, jump around and run around and it's like nothing nothing nice for them like that krishna lifted and all the coward boys and coward men were so surprised and then krishna said come in come in and they all came in and who all came in the peacocks came in the monkeys came in the cows came in the birds came in every living entity came in all the coward boys all the sir, younger coward boys or the equal coward boys all the elderly coward boys the coward men nanda maharaj his contemporary coward men yashoda mai her contemporary elderly vatsalya gopis and the conjugal mood gopis variety of gopis everybody entered and then began the beautiful panorama of variety of mixture of rasas and krishna was lifting govardhan by his left hand so what he was doing indra's greatest power he was defeating by his weakest part of his body what is weakest part of the body actually all of us should understand is his left finger left small finger he is supposed to be the weakest part of the whole body and by the tip of that weakest part of his personality he defeated the highest power of indra the maximum power indra used with full capacity that was very easily playfully defeated by krishna so he was lifting over the mountain on his left left hand small finger and long time had happened by the time everybody's anxiety was finished they had forgotten what he had gone through and they were all looking at him many people ask this question why how krishna how all the coward boys and coward brijbasis how they could be there it is explained that they never asked for any food never asked for any drink never asked for any break never they went to sleep under the mountain they simply kept on gazing at krishna how it is possible because krishna has one quality in 64 qualities that is rupa madhuri the beauty of his form and that form anyway it is beautiful but here he is standing in tribhanga form here he is holding flute in his hand by right hand and playing the flute and by left hand he is holding govardhan that beautiful form of govardhan with krishna playing flute and beautiful form of govardhan dhari with lifting govardhan standing tribhanga folded form was so attractive that seven days and seven nights everybody was just drinking and drinking and drinking through their eyes the nectar of krishna's beautiful form that's why they never get affect got affected by thirst or hunger or the urges of sleep or any other thoughts in their mind so yesterday i was thinking that krishna is so small and you know today morning it started raining so he didn't even have his morning <laughs> makan mishri he's fasting today <laughs> so now at least everything is fine now he should take some butter and ma- mishri so he's requesting sham sundar can he please have you have not had anything so it is explained that she fed him makan and mishri while this was going on and then she felt that oh such a delicate hand you know if you touch it is softer than even butter also and that soft hand is holding such a big mountain so she said that oh coward man at least help him so all the coward men came running to hold the mountain by their sticks and they actually thought that they were holding it and shil mother yashoda thought at least change your hand no you can change your hand hold it on right hand and then she talking to her friends that you know good i had 100 selected cows good i separated them good i fed them separate padma gandha grass good i trained them separately and good i cultivated their milk and that only why i was feeding krishna regularly look at the butter that is padma gandha butter which i fed him because of the strength of that butter my son is able to lift this mountain this is what she is explaining her friends and they are also appreciating yes yes we know how much effort you have done we know the cows you have kept it, kept them separately from nine lakhs of cows and how you have maintained them and they are feeling proud of that but coward boys are saying no they are not agreeing with that ha huh? so one is vasalila's explanation a discussion and krishna is watching and then the coward boy saying no these elderly ladies don't know the secret of krishna's strength shidama the leader of all the coward boys the equal samavayaska he is the leader he was blessed by narad muni he says that every day we wrestle with him without fail when we go to pastures and we defeat him but in the process of getting defeated he has gained so much of strength in his arms because of that he is lifting over them <laughs> and when that is being discussed the gopis are saying no they don't know the real reason they are all on different platform but the real absolute platform of the understanding of the secret of krishna's lifting govardhan is because 
Radha Rani is looking at him with side long glances and he is looking at her with side long glances when that connection takes place between two side long glances the energy from Radha Rani's eyes flow to Krishna's hand and because of that he is able to lift over them and then there was a huge argument between the coward boys and the coward girls because they wanted to demonstration immediately <laughs> how this is happening and suddenly balram ji who is a mixture of all the viruses was watching as soon as they said uh, gopi said that and coward boys are arguing he looked at krishna and sure enough he was looking at radha rani and sure enough radha rani was looking at krishna and suddenly krishna looked at him so immediately he put his eyes down <laughs> as a respect to elder brother balram ji maharaj so he looked down so you can see our shrinath ji shrinath ji's real drishti is down and the brijbasi is at the jatipura mukharvinda they said that you have to offer dandavat to shrinath ji and in dandavat position our face is down no? our eyes are down you turn your face and look up then you will see his eyes like this they are not like this they are eyes like this and you see his eyes then you receive his mercy <laughs> this is what they say so if you know some brijbasis and they are sitting there they will explain to you because the eyes are always put on that shila not like this they are low put like this facing down and that's how you get the that's why when i remember when shrinath ji came here there was discussion going on between devotees you know, elderly gujarati devotees and radhana swami and devotees and they were discussing that shrinath ji in this murti is looking straight we want shrinath ji looking down <laughs> so then some little alterations were done in the existing dt that he was looking down so whenever you offer dandavat to shrinath ji <laughs> please offer dandavat and look up from one position of dandavat only and that's how you'll derive mercy of shrinath ji maharaj <laughs> through his beautiful eyes because whenever you look at the dt's eyes and dt's look at you this said this is one of the ways the mercy flows to you in the form of darshan so then <clears throat> coward boys and um, gopis they had argument and you know the argument doesn't reach anywhere because one is in the mode of sakya and one is mode of conjugal there is no union in between so there is no argument and there is no there is no uh, i mean conclusion in the argument so finally seven days of course this is not the only thing happened there are so many things happened under govardhan krishna for seven days and seven night enjoyed the company of all the devotees and all rasas exchanging beautiful you know interactions between all the variety of devotees so then uh, after 7 days indra came to his senses his highest power was defeated by the weakest power of krishna's body and he understood he is my supreme master i am not supreme lord he is supreme lord and he has defeated me so he came down and you know he went to brahaspati he went to brahma then he had to surrender to cow and then he stopped the rains immediately then krishna put the mountain down all the coward left boys and coward people left to their homes and krishna was so supervising the damage done by indra's rains in braj bhumi at that time surubi brought indra and then all the pardon was done and then indra performed the abhishek and the abhishek was seen by coward boys and they were watching hiding behind the stones and the trees and they told the coward man you know something so many people came one man with thousands of eyes on the body he was there one man with five heads was there one man with four heads were there so many variety of people and they didn't believe that these boys are all children you know they say speak anything but later on the coward boys never forgot what they discussed with gopis under mountain of govardhan so they went to the gopis this is local uh, called as stories um coming down by oral tradition i may not be able to give you exact reference but a very wonderful story and you can in the heart of hearts cross your hearts and think whether it is true or not but you will come to know that yeah, it is true actually <laughs> they went to gopis and they gopis they were discussing you were that day selling that because of radha rani's uh, side long glances the whole govardhan mountain was being lifted by krishna the only power that he had in his arms and his own self was only because of radha rani's side long glances tirpa kataksh do we want to see now so that brought radha rani all the gopis they all coward boys and coward girls they went to govardhan where govardhan was situated and they saw they told radha rani radha rani please show so radha rani stood at one position 
and glanced at the bottom of Govardhan. And then she raised her eyesight and the Govardhan went in the sky. And she looked up and Govardhan remained in the sky for a long time. Then the Sakis asked, shall she kept now the mountain down? Coward boys were amazed to see that she has so much power, not in her arms, just in her eyesight, just the way she looks in her glances, that she lifted Govardhan. Then they immediately accepted the power of Radharani. And then this was kept down. This whole uh, Govardhan Leela is described as Vismay Leela. Vismay Leela means most amazing Leela. This discussion went on in Braj for such a long time that we were kept on discussing how this boy lifted, how this boy lifted. So there is something called as Nanda Baitak. You know, Nanda Baitak is a place where it, Nanda Baitak is there in Mathura also, in Gokul where Krishna was born. Nanda Baitak is in Kamevan for time being, they are shifted there. Nanda Baitak is in Nandagaon also. Everywhere there is Nanda, ba- Nanda Baitak. This is a place where all the elderly coward men will come together and discuss daily Krishna's pastimes, enjoy them, laugh and roll on the ground and also discuss about dangers on Krishna and also discuss about strategies, what we can do about. So one day they all gathered and they just couldn't this was so much discussion was going on. How this seven-year-old boy can lift Govardhan like this? Such a big mountain, you know, it's a very unique mountain. In the form of peacock, the spread is more than the length uh, tall. You know, you can see that 100 crores was the spread. The length of the arch, the mountain, 100 crore yojanas. And the height was 50 crore yojanas. But the spread was bigger than the height. How can one small boy lift like this? So you tell me, Nanda Maharaj, tell us Nanda Maharaj, what is the secret? Nanda Maharaj was already told by Gargamuni, do not disclose the ceremony of name keeping to anybody because it will cause danger at that time. So, it was kept confidential that Nanda Maharaj never told anybody that he had called Gargamuni and he had done the ceremony in cow shed and he, would, he had kept the name, Jata Karma was done, Kundali was made, his future was discussed, his past was discussed. All this wonderful discussion, the Leela, was not told to anybody except for the only family members. And suddenly when this question was put in front of Nanda Maharaj, in the spur of the moment, Nanda Maharaj immediately said, yes, yes, Gargamuni had told everything. Gargamuni had come and he had kept name and that time he had said, this boy will lift Govardhan. He is supreme personality of Godhead. In the past he had killed Ravana and Kumbhakarna. In the previous life he has killed Hiranyakashipu. And he had done so many pastimes. Now he is in this color. Previous lifetime he was that color. He just blurted out everything which was supposed to be a secret. It happens not to us sometimes. Some secrets are there. After many years of keeping that secret, we forget that it is a secret. And then we open that to somebody in a casual discussion and, oh, I was not supposed to tell these things, you know. Some secrets are buried even after death of people, but suddenly it comes out sometimes. Like that Nanda Maharaj, in the spot of the moment, spoke all these things. And that surprised the coward man. They said, you Nanda, you are such a useless person that you have kept all this secret from us. You call us if you are brother from your caste, from your community. And you have not even called us for the name-keeping ceremony of your beautiful son. We cast you away from the community. They all left Chaurasi Khamba immediately and went to Prashubhanu Maharaj. And they told Prashubhanu Maharaj, you are a close friend, you are also authority in Brajbhumi. You must immediately outcast Nanda Maharaj and his full family from our community. We just cannot tolerate this kind of nonsense behavior of calling one's, oneself friend and not inviting us from a very important ceremony. So, Barshubhanu Maharaj said that, see, the times were difficult. I know Nanda's situation was so difficult. Demons were coming again and again. How difficult it was. So, it was instructed by Gargamuni himself. So, he was under the order of Brahmanas. Brahmanas are supposed to guide us and we are supposed to follow the instruction. Then he followed. For the sake of Krishna and Balaram, he followed. Please forgive him. He said, you are siding Nanda Maharaj. We outcast you also. Please Get out of the caste. You and Nanda, both friends, get out of the community of coward men. And some of the coward men, they got alarmed by this serious dividery, dividery activity. You know, this, this is a very serious activity. The whole united coward community is now getting divided because of somebody's anger and somebody's upsurge and somebody's lack of understanding of the situations at that time. So some coward men stood and said, hey, don't talk about Prashubhanu Maharaj being outcasted. His Mahapratapi daughter Radharani, because of her power, 
Today you are peaceful in Nandagao Barsana. Do you know? No demons come here. By whose power? So at that time, in the dis- discussion of Ismail Leela, this pastime was discussed. I don't want to go in detail. Time is not there. This pastime was discussed that how Kamsa personally came to Barsana to search for Krishna Badaram. When he entered the area of Nandagao Barsana, Jawat area, he became a woman. And then he remained woman for six months. You know, collecting cow dung, gathering cow dung, making cow dung cakes, drying them, collecting them in, in the tokri basket, carrying them on a head. And by the way, all this while, he was in the form of a gopi called Kamsini Gopi. And six months he cried and cried and cried in tears that he had to become this kind of situation. He was Chakravarti Samrat. His glories are described in previous chapters of Garga Samhita, how glorious and how Digvijay Kamsa was. And he had come alone by that time. So he was so miserable. How will he go back? He didn't go back. And coward girls clapped and clapped and clapped their hands regularly, enjoyed that Kamsa has become a gopi and he is doing all these activities. If you and me, suppose, get this opportunity, you will feel this is the perfection of our life. This is what we are aiming for. The coward girls are engaging us in the most wonderful service. But Krishna's consciousness, Kamsa's consciousness was viparit, unfavorable. That is why even though in one one guise he had achieved the perfection of his life of becoming a gopi in Barsana under the coward girls of Radharani, he was crying and crying and crying and feeling it was miserable for him. And then Radharani had forgiven Kamsa because Kamsa fell flat on the feet of Radharani and Kirtida Maya was there with Radharani at that time. She said, hey, Chakravarti Samrat, Kamsa is falling at your feet. Please forgive him now. You know, it's enough of punishment for him. So she said, you take bath in Kishori Kund. That, one, that time they were in Javat. In Kishori Kund. And jump in there, take bath. You will achieve the form of male again. And never return again. If you ever return again, you will permanently become a woman here. And I will not give you any concession. So he jumped in the given clothes became a man and ran from there straight to Mathura, not even turned back. What if the girl changes her mind? <laughs> so this was described by some cow- coward men, to those angry coward men about Vishwanu Maharaj. It is he who is the father of that Mahapratapi Radharani by whose mercy to you and me, you and me, Nandagao Barsana are free from d- demons coming regularly and daily and disturbing us. Do you read any story of demons coming in Barsana or Nandagao? No. After this, nothing happened. And then all the coward men got cooled down. They understood that it is because of Radharani that we are free from all demoniac atrocities. And this, this Radharani is daughter of Brishbhanu and this Brishbhanu is close friend of Nanda Maharaj. And because of their position and their situation in Nandagao Barsana, all of us are living very happily. They are our leaders. So they got cooled down. And everything was forgiven and there was no outcasting of Nanda and Brishbhanu Maharaj. So this particular situation, we can understand that the glory of Nandagao and Barsana is so unusual and unparalleled. The Krishna and Krishna and Balaram and Radharani and Gopis they perform the most secret, confidential, innermost antaranga pastimes over there, and that is why the atmosphere was created. And all this was described in the discussions about Vismalila about Gordhan. All this began from discussion about Govardhan, how Krishna is most wonderful. So, we congratulate all of you that the beautiful chapter of Govardhan Puja is beginning. You can release every verse about Krishna's uh, wonderful activity of lifting Govardhan, how much he loved Govardhan, how much gopis appreciated Govardhan. Gopis are topmost devotees of Krishna and they are saying, he is the Haridas Varya, he is the topmost of all topmost devotees. When they say that, you can imagine... Sri Govardhan's glories. And uh, Sri Govardhan is not different from Vishnu. When uh, Sat, Brahma, Shiva and uh, um, Vishnu, they were cursed by Sati, Sati Anasuya, to become stones. So Brahma became stone in Barsana as Brahmachal. Shiva became stone in Nandagaon as uh, Nandishwara. And Vishnu became stone in Vrindavan as Govardhan mountain. And thus we have Sevak Bhagwan, Sri Govardhan, present in uh, Sri Brajbhumi, and Govardhan and Jamuna are the inseparable ingredients of the existence of Sri Bindavan Dham. 
without govardhan and jamuna shri vrindavan is incomplete shri krishna and radharani are incomplete their pastimes are incomplete their love is incomplete because they need this environment atmosphere ambiance of shri govardhan and jamuna ji always next to them so that they can express their innermost joys and love and expressions of the love for each other through pastimes only in their company so you can imagine in goloka he is called as chatashranga parvata when he was born out of the chest of krishna as a sprout he was named as satashringa then he was called as govardhan when he came down so shri giriraj govardhan ki and also we are going to go to yatra and experience the presence of govardhan in our association of devotees there so i wish you all the best so that you can draw the maximum essence of consciousness from shri giriraj of servitude how one should serve krishna in the most pristine consciousness Thank you very much, Hari Krishna. If there are any questions, any comments, we would like to try to answer. Granth Raj, Srimad Bhagavatam ki, Shri Giri Raj, Govardhan ki, Thai Gaur Primanandi, Adi Bo.